And here we are, spotting in the bottom right, in the blue for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's Cure! And his opponent in the upper left, in the red. Teamless once again. The man from Busan. It's DRG. And man, DRG plays such an interesting style of ZV ZVT. Really, I don't know, I, I guess I can best describe it as Sue-like. Although, I mean, it's it's not it's not just how Sue plays. And I don't know, maybe his style has changed in the last um, week. Or the last, or I don't know, last last couple months since I really saw him play a televised match, uh, really since the GSL where he was really uh, taking names, which I guess in part is why I'm so excited to see this game. I haven't had a chance to cast or to watch a lot of his games recently. And hey, you know what? Everyone loves the notorious DRG, but on the flip side, Cure, he plays a style of his own as well. I mean, he was the player that really started doing those Widow Mine drops that just killed every Terran over the course of, or every Zerg over the course of just about a month. It's, it killed Raynor, it killed Serral, it killed Rogue, it killed DRG uh, in the King of Battle qualifiers. It killed Solar, it killed just about every top tier Zerg. And uh, with good reason, I mean, it was hard to stop. It just is the, ma the mass Widowmine, Widowmine drops. But I feel like Zergs at the, very, at the very least have kind of figured out how to deal with this, even if they... Uh, well, sometimes it kills him, but I mean, Widow Mine Drops have been happening versus Protoss for the last seven years, I think, at this point. And uh, Lucky Widow Mine Drop still goes on to kill the Protoss player, so. Well, it's a pretty good place to be where, yeah, you occasionally can make something happen, but generally the game does just go on. Now, DRG, and neither DRG nor Cure doing anything too crazy here. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, Reaper expand, of course, for Cure, and just a quick third base from DRG. 16-18-17. As, the, well, as nine, times out of, nine games out of ten have gone now. Interestingly, of course, DRG has chosen to take the triangular third instead of the linear third, and uh, this is actually a... is perhaps a little bit more impactful than one would think. Simply because, so the linear third tends to mean that you're not quite as droppable. Because, well, th this position right here, that uh, that the Terran can maybe abuse where they go high ground, low ground, high ground, low ground. It's just really annoying to defend. Uh, but on the flip side, it does mean that DRG is able to get his creep out further. He's, he's able to get his creep around these doodads that the tanks love to siege up so much. Maybe get his creep up on the high ground t and take these rocks out before the first siege happens. And uh, really, these are all incredibly useful things because... Well, this position's a whole lot more seizable. This is this position's a little bit harder to defend. And really, by, for DRG, just getting ahead of things, as he will, as this base will come under siege eventually, being able to, um, to spread his creep out there, to be able to put himself in a position where he can take these wide open uh, defensive fights, that's going to put himself in a really good position. As we do see a G DRG playing that style, that solar, has uh, started to do a little bit. I don't know if it's Solar who has uh, really started doing it, but well, I, certainly Solar was the first person I saw do it, where he goes and he, he just takes his uh, his drones out of gas that much faster than you would have. Really, it's just about 50 gas, so you get a 4 minute speed instead of a 3 minutes and 30 second speed, which honestly, that's just a really good time. We're going to see a drop coming on in here first and foremost from our Blue Terran player, so he will be able to knock an Overload out. And that's just annoying. I mean, a little bit of map control, but more importantly than that, it is a supply block for the time being. And how many Zerglings do we have on the map? So we're going to have, we have nine Zerglings on the map, but okay, Queens are in really good position here. So this Medivac will just take some damage before being able, um, before being able to unload. So the Queen's in a great position. This drop's not going to get a whole lot done. Behind that, we have Hellions, uh, more and more Hellions on the way. How many Hellions do we have? Two Hellions, two by two on the way. So we're going to see, this is actually rather these are these Hellions feel rather delayed, um, especially considering this will be Hellion Banshee. I would expect to see at least one other set of Hellions coming on in, as this Overlord will not be able to get any sort of good scout off. There we go. So we're going up to at least six Hellions, as uh, Cure is taking the third base behind this uh, as well. So th yeah, it's going to be about a six-minute third base, which not particularly fast, but not particularly slow either. 
Ooh. We're going to see a Marine Hellbat Banshee timing coming on in here, which is... Well, that's a weird thing. Actually, wait, did did Banshee show? Because we, we DRG is reacting to this as if he knows they're, they're Banshees. I mean, the, the spores, he puts spore in every mineral line, and there is one... Where's that fourth one? He did build four, so there, there, yeah, there we go. It's on the transfer between the main and the natural. All the positions that a Banshee's really, really like to camp out on. But yeah, we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see a pretty scary Hellbat timing coming on in, in here with the Banshees, with the Hellbats, because their Banley Nest is only just about halfway done. And Cure and TRG, well, he's got a decent amount of Zerglings, but he's taking a fourth base here. And with the, these Marines, with all these Hellbats, that are only just now showing, by the way, but they they are waddling up on creep. There are no Banley Serum. We, see, we do see some Zerglings popped up immediately, but I don't think there are enough. There's Yeah, okay, we have the Larva for it. Um, okay, now we're going to have, of course, we're going to have this uh, the Spore Crawler go forward. Really, a Serving Divided Black, but also, it's going to be able to knock out this, um, knock out the Medivac really quickly, which means there's going to be a little bit less reinforcements for the moment, but more and more Hellions are coming on in here. And this just looks like a, a mop, honestly. Uh, and unfortunately, DRG is just going to get taken out here in this game number one. His third base has been penetrated. Banshee's in the main base. Well, not getting a whole lot done yet, but now they now they are. We're starting to see them get targeted. Let's get some drones, get targeted down. As now the drones, they are on the run here on the right hand side of the map. But Hellions will find them as well. So the lineup, it's maybe not going to happen at first, but oh no, all the drones are going to go down. 16, 18, 19, 25, 27 drones going down here for DRG. And uh, I'd love to tell you that there's a way back into this game for the man from Busan, but uh, unfortunately, my father taught me to never tell a lie. And, um, yeah, that, that cherry tree was cut down. The, the, I did cut that cherry tree down, or more importantly, Cure, or sorry, Dear, or yeah, Cure cut that cherry tree down. So we do have this run by attempting to get something done. Kind of getting on in here, but not really going to get anything done whatsoever. And GG, Cure, is going to take game number one. But hey, the wonderful thing about it being a best of three is it means we have at least one more game. Coming up here, one more game in glory, and it's going to be Romanticide. And man, Romanticide has shown us some really cool ZBTs over the last, well, pretty much as long as it's been in the pool. So, hopefully DRG will be able to take a game here, take us into game number three, but our game is loaded up, so let's go. And here we are, spawning in the upper left, in the red. Down one game in this series, F after really he just misread the build of him. Cure, the teamless Zerg player, give it up for DRG. And in the bottom right, in the blue for Dragon Phoenix Gaming, he is Cure. Man, my, oh. It is so nice up here right now. I, lo I love that, uh, so I'm, I'm in the Northeastern US and I have not, be, I've not lived up here before. This is my first winter. Um, I, I lived in Arizona for the last five years and be, before that I was in the Mid-Atlantic and it's pretty much been snowing, a little bit of flurrying every night, kind of right, right around dusk, right around dark. Um, sometimes it accumulates, sometimes it doesn't, but man, it is just absolutely magical to be able to look out the, the, look out the window every night and say, oh yeah, there's a little bit of snow coming down. Nice big fat flakes. All that makes me very happy. But hey, It's a good, good time. It also means I get to ski a lot, <laughs> which is good. Uh, I actually, you know, I'm, I'm re really grateful with all this casting I've been doing. Um, casting for the most part, it's not, it doesn't pay my rent, doesn't pay my bills, but it does kind of pay for my ha my hobbies. And I think that's in a pretty good situation to be in where you're doing one hobby and that kind of pays for your other hobby, at least in part. Yeah, that is exactly what happens here, and uh, I'm very grateful to all the different uh, opportunities that I've been provided, much like, uh, well, casting on the Alpha X channel. So, what that absolutely means is you should make sure to give Alpha X a like, give a follow, do the subscribe thing, whatever it is that you do on YouTube, I don't know. I tend to cast on Twitch. But I, I'm sure there are plenty of things that you can do to really show support for Alpha X. Make sure to follow him on, uh, follow him on Twitch, follow him on Trovo. And absolutely subscribe subscribe to this YouTube channel. Because hey, 
There's going to be a lot of content coming up here from myself and from the other Alpha X affiliated, semi-affiliated uh, casters that do a bunch of stuff. As Alpha X is really moving into being a content house, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've been really been kind of missing that ever since MLG left the scene. Because, yeah, ESL puts on tournaments and it's great. But, I mean, hey, uh, MLG, they had their just 24-hour broadcasting studio in a New York skyscraper. And it was the coolest thing. You kind of kind of turn on whenever it was. And either you get the... the the, the rebroadcast from the day, or you'd get the day itself, as uh, Axel, the the Axe brother, the uh, yeah, the Axe duo, Axel Toss and Axe Lav, were just casting kind of whatever was on. And that was such a cool setup. I very, I was very sad when that went away. But now we don't get that. I mean, we don't have constant Alpha X casting action on Twitch, or on Trover or whatever, and that's unfortunate. But on the flip side. I mean, Alpha X is producing so much content between the the best of nines they do, the show matches, the four-person invitationals, the tournaments, the massive King of Battles tournament that I had the opportunity to do the qualifiers for uh, back a couple months ago, and everything else they do. The, the Axon Xmas tournament, they put on with Axon, all these different things. So, they do good work, and I'm not just saying that because I'm shilling for the... Uh, the channel that I'm on. Bye bye. But what are we gonna see in this game now? A little bit of a very, a little bit of an adaptation here. Is it dear Jesus? Hey, look, I have really not been able to scout a whole lot. I know you don't have a third base. Um. But I'm going to drop a Spine, and that sh maybe should keep me safe. Granted, I mean, Spines do only so well against a lot of Marines, against uh, a lot of Marines in Hell. I mean, they're good against Hellbats, but uh, they only do so well against Marines. But I guess that what this does mean is it gives you an opportunity to maybe hold things up a little more, bit more. But now we just have a drop coming on in. And with the lack of Zerglings here, well, looks like... Okay, there we go. So uh, a bunch of Queens here will be able to shove everything back. But Cure, he's doing the same build he did in game number one. And the question really here this time is whether DRG will be able to defend it differently. Actually, as I say that, do we have an armory? Not, not yet, so this may be just a little bit of a different build. Although it's shaping up in similar ways as we do have a couple of aliens coming on in. No, really only two. Oh, that's right. Cure is just heavily supply blocked here. So... Cure going for a bit of the same build, but well, he just finds himself a blood block as he tries to execute it, and you know, just kind of funny thing. Oh yes, you know, these pro players—they're not going to be able to hit the time they want because they got some high blocked. I mean, they're pros. That, that doesn't happen, but absolutely it does. So I don't think Cure may not be able to hit this timing that he's been looking for after all. And there we go. The uh, the factor was lifted. Cure bailing out of things as he's just moving on into three base play now. Drop on the left hand side was able to shoot the overlord, overlord back just a little. Actually, I don't think the overlord moved all. Overlord was just there, but the queen is aware of things. Overlord's aware of things. But now, of course, we have the banshees moving on into the main base. And do we have detection? We do have in the main base. We do in the third, and that's all that matters for the moment. Here's the banshees. They're going to find their way and kind of sit that high ground position. But spores will fire, and they will fire these. We have three queens in the main base, so really, cure is buttoned up here. It says no, no, no. You really, do. I don't want you to get any sort of damage done here whatsoever and it looks like yeah cure not going to be able to get anything done and uh, that means the game will go on it means drg will actually have a game that he has a lot how many queens do we have on the map all right so let's see three queens in the main base four oh okay so it's standard seven seven queen defense just feels like it's a whole lot more because of uh where they're positioned and the kind of clumps they're in but anyway now we're gonna have a fourth base coming on up here i'm Almost surprised that Cure didn't take this as his third because, again, it allows you to spread creep past the problem siege, problematic siege area. But, I mean, hey, taking this as a third base is pretty safe. So, safety safety in defense versus kind of a more aggressive safety is the name of the game here. So we now have this drop coming on in, but, uh, well, not in yet. But now the Banshee is going to try to find its way, and these Banshees should get nothing done. But anyways, we have a bit of re reinforcements coming on in here on the left-hand side to augment augment this push and well actually this is gonna this is gonna be a pretty scary stim is done and with these hellbats i mean this is not a fight that these earlies could take so the fourth base will get canceled drone will go down but hey you know what the fourth base has been delayed at seven minutes in seven minutes in and there is no fourth base for the terran player so or for the zerg player and so here's got to be a little bit happy with that i mean 
Because at the end of the day, and DRG more so than anyone else is so good at just canceling and rebuilding, canceling and rebuilding, and not letting the fact that he doesn't have a fourth base really get to him all that much because he just doesn't lose much. I mean, yeah, he loses 75 minerals. He loses the cost of a cancel, and that just is about it as he realizes whether or not he can take a fight, and he goes from there. So now we have a really big fight coming on here. DRG is setting up. He's looking to just fully envelop this army. But, uh, yeah, it looks like he's just going to back up. Says, okay, well, I was scouted out. Don't really think I can get this done anymore. And the game goes on. Now, we do have a bunch of mutas going on the way here. And this is not two-base muta. This is uh, the kind of the three-base muta build that we've seen Serral uh, love so much in the last month. And this is pretty cool. So, it does mean that 1-1 was delayed compared to Cure. But now 1-1 one, one versus 1-1 one, one for the is a... Well, it's going to be there for quite a bit now. Look at these Banshees. Uh, well, actually... Oh, nice Widowmine. So that's a pretty cool drop. So the Banshees, of course, drag the Mutas into the Widowmine, into the drop here. As we do have another drop coming on into the natural. A bunch of Widowmine drops coming in. Now the Mutas are doing a pretty good job cleaning all this up. But they are losing some of their number. Meanwhile, the Widowmine, Widowmine drop coming on into the main base. Six workers go down. Fifteen workers go down. And, of course, it's going to follow on in into the thirds. He's going to take advantage of that position. But the Queen is aware of this. What am I going to burrow anyways? And yeah, 21 workers go down just like that. And that's kind of what these muters were, were here to prevent. The goal of the muters on the on the derivative sense is just to serve as a really good drop defense. And as they're not able to do that, well, that's not a good situation for you, DRG. As he loses 21 workers immediately from the, the just really from one Widowmine drop. If there's a Widowmine right there that is... This Overseer should go and check it out, but that's not what we're seeing. Now, Cure will have 2-2. Two, two. Uh, far in advance of far in advance of DRG here. This one of mine is going to go off. Queen's going to take damage, going to get healed. Really nothing impactful. And maybe this should, should tell DRG that, hey, there's one of mine. Let's get rid of it. There we go. All right, so we have another Widowmine drop coming on in here on the left-hand side once again. It will find the fact that Curie is trying to take a fifth base on the left-hand side. So that's going to be good knowledge in and of itself, but I do believe that this Medivac will get... Yeah, there we go. Medivac will get spouted, uh, scouted as well, and so it's going to go on in, into the natural. And the question... Okay, so DRG does have the pull this time. Really, much better response than we saw previously, although we're going to see one Widowmine burrowed anyways. Just going to do some damage to a queen. But now two more kind of come, uh, two more Widowmines finding their way on into the main base here. And the Medivac, and the, well, the Mutas do find all that. So this is going to be far less impactful than the previous drop was. But you still got to remember, <laughs> 25 workers went down to that previous drop. It is hard. It is damn hard to be as impactful as that drop was. But now, DRG, he's maxed out. 2-2 two -two is just about halfway done. But Hive is on the way. He is able to get up into his tech path. His fifth base has been uncontested. So yeah, DRG has lost a decent amount of economy, but... Not much more than that. It's now the, this big army from here is going to come busting on through. Attack on into the third base. And there's not a whole lot here. So maybe we're going to see a decent amount of uh, army go, or a decent amount of economy get taken away. But that is not going to be the case at all. As the army of DRG or army of Cure cycles around. And yeah. Cure supply blocked. That's about it. Actually, uh, that's a fairly decent supply block. Um, as we have nothing on the way. It's only just now seeing depots being rebuilt. So Cure's going to be supply block for quite a while. I would... DRG probably not going to be able to make use of this timing. Because he's going to wait for... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. He's going to wait for 2-2 two -two more than anything else. But, I mean, this is definitely something he can perhaps make use of. As, uh, we're still waiting on some... We're still waiting on the supply. Alright, there we go. <laughs> as uh, Cure's supply jumps up about 20 supply in an instant. All right, so it looks like Ultra Display will be the name of the game here. And now, oh no, DRG Hughes found the upgrades here. And yeah, we're going to have SCVs pulled trying to repair this. But that means a lot of SCVs are just going to go down as well. Actually, only two. And uh, with the Thor here, well, Cure is in a position where he can defend. And unfortunately, DRG really only get fight, uh, taking, uh, taking the fight to Cure in one position. He's got his army here on the left ready to do something. But uh, these, these Banshees... Okay, yeah, these are the, the original Banshees. I thought that maybe Kira decided to rebuild them later on, which would have been weird, but, you know. Sometimes players do weird things. But anyway, we do have 3-3 on the way. Adrenaline is just about done, and it looks like DRG's uh, late, at least initial late game tech, 
is going to be a bunch of Ultralisks coming on in, which, I don't know, it, it feels like pro players are moving away from Ultras. I mean, they're great on creep, but they're really not great off creep. As uh, the laggy medevac will get taken out once again, well, t will get taken out here. And now we just begins the fight over the creeps right now. The Banshees will be potentially be able to take this up now with the Mutas here. They will just only be they only be able to heavily damage the bottom the bottom left. Oh, that's heavily honestly. If I'm DRG, I'm kind of canceling and rebuilding that anyways. It's just gonna be so low on health by the time it comes up. But now, now of course DRG he's trying to take two bases at once, which means he will probably lose one. That's just kind of the calculus you do when you say, hey, I'm gonna take two bases at once. I'm just gonna be okay with it. But actually, really not a really nice splits coming in from DRG, and more importantly, he will be able to keep that around. As the fourth base does go down here, Muta's going to fly on in as well. Now, the Widow Mine Shot's going to be really nice, but it will actually only take the Observer out. The, the, and with plus two here on these Mutas, the Missile Turret's not getting a whole lot done. So 12 workers are going down. The fourth base has died. And DRG, this base is alive. This base is alive. And the Mutas, they're going to get out and escape. DRG in the last 30 seconds has done such a... Has, has generated such an economic delta for himself. Has generated such an economic... I'm not going to say necessarily advantage because it's not exactly realized yet, but put himself in such a superior economic position. He has these bases. Uh, he has pretty much every base that he can reasonably expect to own on the map. He took out 14 workers. He took out a base. Now we're going to see Bailey coming on in, busting through this wall. Yeah. The army's still there. And it uh, looks like our our replacement planetary is just about done. Is cure. This is the late game, so we're just seeing, we're seeing. Uh, well, we're seeing orbitals. We're seeing command centers just dropped all over the place. Now, the one thing here though is cure is only on four bases. So, yeah, he's got command centers. He's got mules up the wazoo, but it only matters so much. Is that this is a lot of missile? <laughs> this is so many missile turrets in the natural. I almost feel like this is an overcommitment to missile turrets here, uh, con ever, considering you know. Every missile turret, it's what? 100 minerals? Um, it's a bunch of marines. So, okay, now we're going to have the main army. The main army of Kirik, or our DRG, is going to run on in here. Trying to take out this third base, and the Thor and everything else is in a choke. So, the Bailings are fighting a decent amount of these Widow Mines, but actually, it looks like this is going to be a terrible fight here for DRG. Well, I say that. Kirik's not really microing it. So, not all that bad at all. As he will be able to knock out nine workers. As actually he's going to be able to take this this uh, command center out as well. These plus two meters absolutely shred things. And the army is just taking a little bit too long. Well, I'm going to say that. It's taking a little bit while to get there. But the meter is not getting exactly what they want to get done. But anyway. He knocked out a Thor. He knocked out this supply depot wall once again. To cure his supply falling precipitously through the floor. And it's telling. There are still potentially 16 SCBs that can efficiently mine from this base. Now granted that's going to go away about 10 seconds, but it's 15 minutes into the game, and the third base is not mined out yet. And by mined out, I mean it's, it's not an out of 8, out of 10, out of 12, something like that. So anyway, Cure really has not been in the best economic position this entire game. I mean, he's been in an okay position, yeah, but it's not that godlike terror in a uh, four-base economy that you sometimes see. Anyway, now a bunch of what am I just, they're just sitting, and uh, yeah, okay, DRG's aware of this game, they'll just take these out. Especially with plus three flyer just about done. And now that means they will find themselves go for it. But you're a nuke on the way as well. Where's the ghost? Ghost coming in with a nuke as we do have a nice Baneling Ultralisk run by going to take this base out. As Mutas are going to fly in, or Army is going to fly in here as well. Uh, Ultra's doing incredible things as the nuke does go off. Gets the gets 18 workers just like that. Things are happening on all of the release. And a lot of Mutas are dying. The Ultras will be able to get that orbital as well. That's not something that should really ever happen. And hey, okay, so as we sit here, we try to figure out exactly where we stand. DRG's got a bank. He's lacking a he's lacking a gas bank for the moment, but he has a mineral bank. He has 83 workers. He is mining on pretty on so many bases, and he really should saturate these. Well, how much? What's his income? Yeah, he's sitting about a thousand gas per minute, just about where you want to be as a Zerg player. So DRG is a pretty good spot. I wouldn't. I could see him saturating a couple more gases just because. Well, that's useful. <laughs> you kind of you just want that because. Look, look at this gas bag, right? I mean, he's just spending it as he gets it. But other than that, I mean, he's in a great economic position. <laughs> Until Cure, of course, with a mule hammer gets dropped. That is... Dropping five mules, and suddenly, even though Cure is down half the workers of his opponent, he equalized the... He, he is ahead in the mineral income 
for the moment as we look at this just drop off a cliff. The emules, they get you a lot of money. All right, so the next uh, nuke is done. Do we see a ghost out on the map? It does not appear to be the case. And Kira, once again, he will have to suffer through another Zerg Assault on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, it looks like this time he has been able to really establish this base, but tellingly, this is not a planetary anymore. It is just an orbital. Kira having to move some of his auxiliary bases that he would get just so for the additional mules. Well, no longer his nice blitz from here from these Zerglings. Vulture's going to run on in, and the Banelings coming on in behind. Now, there are not a lot of mutas left. Not really a ton of mutas on the field. And these uh, missile, missile turrets are doing a great job, but this does is another command center that has gone down. And as long as DRG is able to really take these, they're not efficient trades, but they're removing so much economy from the map. Yeah, it sucks to lose all these ultras, but I mean, look at this. He's remaxing immediately. And now Cure, really, realistically, he's kind of running out of bases. Uh, he's, got, he's got his fourth, he's got his fifth. But third is, well, never mind, there's another orbital. <laughs> There is another orbital on the map, indeed. And while we're not here yet, we are eventually going to get to this point, this, this kind of weird point in the game where Kira has expanded so much slower that should he be able to take this base, for example? Should he be able to take this base? Should he be able to take this base? Should he be able to take the three bases that technically belong to him on the map? Well, DRG is going to run out of money, and I mean, this is how Zerg plays, but DRG has lost, what is that, 7,000 more resources than his opponent is. Okay, this drop will get cleaned up, but we have another drop coming on in here on top on top of this third base. Now, I'm kind of surprised we're seeing it coming on in, into the third, but yeah, this ghost will go take, will get taken down, so yeah, no big deal. The nuke will be canceled. Look at DRG now he's gonna attempt or sorry, here's gonna try to take the take the left hand base. And that is a lot of win of mines here in this minefield. So this it makes run by so hard to happen. As all you need is just a, a couple little bio units and then five win five win of mines and run by into that side are gonna be rather difficult. But it looks like this this uh command center will get found out. These are plus three meters. This command center is just gonna go down really, really, really fast. And the army's not really there to deal with it, not yet. All right, so the Bailey's going to come crash again. These snipes on top of everything. As I notice, of course, he's sniping down the Overseers, which means the Ghosts can theoretically cloak. And the Command Center will be... <laughs> the Command Center is going to get saved as we watch it burn down. Is Cure on top of things? Yeah, okay, there we go. SCV's coming down. The Muta's deciding that, yeah, there's not quite enough here to defend us anymore. We're going to... Oh, we're not going to take this fight. And that's a lot of Ghosts on the map now. How many Ghosts are we at? We are at eight ghosts, as many ghosts as marauders at this point. There we go. Cloak is done. So that again, that was pretty cool. We saw the snipes go down on the on the observers, which meant the ghosts theoretically would have been able to fight with impunity once those observers do go down. And <laughs> yeah, that that nuke is not going to get done. Nice static defense. And there we go. Another ghost hits the net. Another one down. Another one down. Another one. Another ghost hits the deck. Something like that. Anyway. Well, Cure is really trying desperately to be able to take this base because he is running out. Of, he, he's not in the best economic position here. And he absolutely understands that. If we, once again, DRG is sweeping on in, trying to see whether he can maybe get on top of things. Now, these Mutas are just taking so much damage from the Thors. The Magic Boxing is not there, and so many Mutas died in the blink of an eye. But hey, we got the Remax coming on in as the, planet, as the Command Center is getting targeted down. But hey, with the Snipes, not a lot of those Mutas survived. But once again, this is a game of economy. This is a game of, of supply more than anything else. As DRG here, he's sitting here, plus 15, plus 20 supply, 50 odd workers up on his opponent. He's mining from every base that he can realistically be expected to own on the map. And Cure, he's mining out those outlying bases he just took so recently because, hey, the mule hammer is a thing. So we look at economy. Here he's not mining a lot for the moment. Now he's going to try to take this base once again, but I mean, these are cracking. He's going to have to lift this immediately. Or not. DRG lacking the gas heavy units that he really needs to make sure this happens because, again, he doesn't have a lot of gas. He's been just been spending it so hard this game. Even as he mines, you know, 1,200 gas a minute, which is a pretty reasonable number, to be totally honest. He's mining out of that. Not mining out of these gases for the moment. Not yet. 
but he does have the rich Vespian gas. So he's doing a really good. He's doing a pretty good job of managing his gas economy as this run by is coming on in. And hey, they're cracklings. They're gonna annihilate things pretty quickly. Now the wood mines, of course, they're gonna try to reburrow here. And it looks like, yeah, they, they will just be able to remove most of that deer. Do you not really paying attention? But the second bit of run by is coming on in here, and he's going to be able to find the Ghost Academy. And, man, that's going to be really nice. Of course, Ghosts are the are just kind of the, the ultimate late-game Terran Force. So being able to remove the Ghost Academy. Is that Ghost Academy? It's just a lot of L. That took forever for the crit to go down. But, of course, hey, that's not the only store here. As this fourth base does go down, more and more crackings on top. 19 more workers do go down here. And up here only on 20 workers. Which, realistically, is kind of all he needs as he's sitting here. Uh, only out of 12 here, out of 16 here, so I guess he could do with 30-ish, but he's got mules, so it's going to be okay. But now the big deal is the army's, well, actually, as I say that, army supply cure, it's, it is even. Cure's army, ha throughout this entire game, even as he's taken so, so big economic, uh, economic slaps, I guess. Um, such big economic damage, well, his army's staying pretty good. It's a lot. It's, it is maybe not quite as expensive as Dear Jesus, but it's okay. And uh, with the amount of ghosts here, I, he absolutely can get something done, especially if Dear G doesn't micro properly and takes some one of my shots. But now we have Dear G coming on in once again. The ghosts are getting on top of no snipes coming on down here, which means these ultras are just that much more powerful. Zergling's getting on top of everything as well as we hit kind of have a flank. But Kind of a flank coming on in, on in. More and more banglings sweeping in here. So many banelings taste, taste this, although they do come in two waves, which makes them a little bit less scary. But the banelings, they're just going to take out the, the the command center. They're going to take out the orbital, and that really should not happen. There we have it. GG, the economy is broken. And DRG is going to take game number two. And what a game. What a game indeed. But, friends, Romans, countrymen, you know what this means. It means we get a game three. And that, well, I have not heard sweeter sounds. I've been talking about StarCraft in quite a bit. Ah, uh, well, that's not quite fair. It means we get game seven is probably a better, that's a slightly sweeter, sweeter words, but I will not shake my head at a game three, at an ace match, at a rubber match. Winner, of course, moves on to the third round of the Alema League weekly number 214. Loser. Hey, just kind of fall out. They got to try again next week. But hey, our games are all loaded up. Let's go. And here we are spawning in the bottom left in the red. Representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's Cure. And in the upper right, in the blue... For himself and himself alone, formerly of the Afrika Freaks, it's DRG. Ooh, this is interesting here in this game number three. DRG is get never mind. I guess maybe he... Well, actually, you know what? This is still interesting. As this is a pool first coming on in here from DRGZ. He's going to be a look, looking to get pretty aggressive here in Game 3. I mean, this is Pillars of Gold, though. This is one of the longer rush distance maps. So, I'm kind of surprised that, well, that, 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 that that is what we are seeing coming on in from our Blue Zerg player. But, I mean, hey, you know what? If he wants to get something done, I, this may just be... Yeah, okay, yeah, he has pulled out a gas. So, this, he's just going to build Sixlings, something like that. Try to wait until the uh, until the Reaper's about halfway across the map as he sends them around and then just deny the low ground command center. But no guarantee that the command center is being built on the low ground. Although, I mean, hey, this is... What am I talking about? This is a CVT. Of course it's going to be built on the, on the low ground. 99 games out of 100 at the pro level. You see exactly what we see here. So now we have the Zerglings running across the map. The Reaper is about halfway done. So we should see the Zerglings maybe ha camp out right around here or something. Of course, it is down to player preference. As uh, they would just wait for the Reaper to show up in, uh, well, actually won't even have to wait for the Reaper to show up because, uh, well, once the Reaper show, once the Reaper shows up, you will see the fact that the, the, the hatchery is late. 
So the fact that there is a wiggling spawning pool, so he's going to know exactly what is up. Actually, he's going to be able to intercept, so no, he will not. Nice pathing there for DRG. So now, DRG is going to be able to run on into the natural here. Delay at the very least, most likely just cancel this command center as, oh no, cure. He went for a reactor, so there's not even going to be a marine coming on out of here. So there we have it. There was the one marine, but that is just about it. And the command center is going to get canceled. Now, the Reaper is in the main base, and he is trying to get something done. But uh, all it will do is force a couple cancels. As, as, uh, one of the benefits of going pool first like this is, hey, you got to queen out pretty early. So the speedlings will find their way on in here. Maybe just targeting down the reactor, but hey, there's a marine on the high ground. And with the SimCity, that's not really going to get all that much done. And yeah, the command center is going to get down, but the command center is not going to be in place until like four minutes. Four, four thirty, something like that. Which means, hey, Tierji is pretty happy here. Is he just going? He's just going to hit that drone button over and over and over again. To be a couple, more, a couple more queens coming out, so we can see the inject and walk, inject and waddle when the queens are. Although they don't really waddle too much. And oh no, Tierji almost finding the reapers. He scouts around for things. Not quite though. So the Reaper will be able to stay alive for the moment. And looks like we're going to see some Banshee play coming on in here from Cure in this game number three. As he looks to maybe recoup his losses. I mean, he's not terribly far behind. He's not dead by any stretch of the imagination, but he, he's not happy. He's not happy that he's uh, having to build, he's having to delay and rebuild his command center. He's going to have to lose, um, losing 100 minerals just like that. 150, I guess, because got the the SCV died. So losing that many resources that early on is is a downside. I mean, it's not game ending, but it doesn't feel great for our blue or for our red Terran player. But uh, certainly, certainly, he's not down and out. He is going for the Reapers once again. As we do have a couple Hellions out already, and this is a Banshee that will get scouted. Will in fact also scout that the that cloak is on the way. But curious, too far into this, I don't think we're going to see it cancel. Yeah, that is a Strat from a bygone era where you start cloak and then you cancel it. I have not seen that style of play very much recently. Generally, even if it's scouted, you just kind of keep going with the cloak because it's useful and it makes the makes the banshees that much more impactful. It forces maybe a faster layer than Dior would have liked, or it forces a couple more spore crawlers. All these things, they're implicit damage, even if they're not explicitly killing workers, killing uh, army, doing something like that. And it looks like we're going to see the same build that we saw from here in game number one. Well, a similar one. We're going to see some sort of Hellbat Banshee push. How many Marines do we have? Not a lot. Yeah, it looks like Marines... We, we didn't see a lot of reactor Marines. So this is just going to be a Hellbat Banshee push. As the Banshee will find... Well, find a drone for its trouble. And, of course, one of the downsides of this build that DRG has decided to go for here in this game number three is that he, he is lacking on Queens. Right now, he only has five. He will eventually get up to that nice defensive seven mark, but he's going to get up to that seven queens just about a minute slower than he thought, than he would in a normal setup. But again, he delayed the, he delayed the natural. I mean, Kieran only just now getting his third base started. His natural is, well, it's not even fully saturated at six minutes into the, almost six minutes into the game. So, Kira, again, not in the best economic position, but I mean, he's making he's making the best of it. Now we have the Hellbat push coming on in, and one queen is just going to get snapped down in a second. Now, this is not a medevac push, so these uh, these Hellbats will eventually get taken out, but not before doing a rather significant damage. It's more as, well, there's just not a lot of Zerglings, and the Hellbats have found a really good position here. So, yeah, the queens are firing away. They're cutting away, but this is one of those games where it act where this actually feels like a pretty good timing for the uh, for the chair player. It's actually against a group, too. That's really nice. So he will get on top of this queen. Uh, two queens going down, a bunch of zerglings, some uh, some drones as well. And now with the banshees just sitting away, eight workers are going down, and it's it's funny the amount of times I, we just don't see uh, how that timings get a whole lot done. Well, this time they absolutely do. Now the banshees they are firing away at the spire, and I wouldn't mind seeing them sell out to just kill this. I think they have the DPS to do it. Yeah, the queens uh, the queens will be able to get on top of this, but not before the spire is canceled and rebuilt. So that just sets DRG's timing. So far back, I mean, he wanted to have mutas popping, or he wanted to have mutas getting built right now, and instead the spire is only just about 10% done. He had to cancel and rebuild, and yeah, yeah, a banshee went down, but I mean, look at this. 10 workers went down, 23 zerglings, 5 queens have died over the course of this game, and a spire was canceled. That is damage. That is exactly what Kira needed 
to find himself back in this game to counterpunch, to punish Jir. To punish DRG for may maybe being a little bit too greedy after going for that pool first, going for that cancel on his low ground command center. Now here, he's going to be able to take his third base. DRG, fourth base, not even an idea at the moment. As it looks like we're going to have a run by coming on in, maybe. As uh, Yeah, okay, so he will be able to find a decent amount of... Well, he will be able to find the SCP's Terrence Ring, but with the drop coming on in, on in, we'll not be able to kill off any of them. Unfortunately, man, if that run by goes in 30 seconds, uh, 10 seconds later, he gets a lot of damage done. But these are the way things go. Now the Spire is done a minute slower than would have liked, and with 12 meters on the way, DRG will be able to eventually to begin to establish map pressure, but there's no Baneling Nest. I don't know that this is a mistake from DRG or just this, this is the build he is following, but there's no Baneling Nest, which means that this push... Okay, that Banshee, uh, you're gonna, you're not going to get anything done. But this push coming in, it is going to be incredibly difficult to stop. It's, there are no Banelings, and when you don't have Banelings, it's really hard to fight Marines. Especially 1-1 one, one Marines when you have 0-0. Zero, zero, and yeah, Mutaling can kind of do something. And it looks like DRG is going to play this this uh, style we've seen him play so often in the past where he's just trying to counterattack as much as possible, force the Terran to stay home. But hey, it looks like four workers have gone down. Actually, this drop will be forced to pick up. So one medevac will get targeted down as well. Decent amount of these Marines, but hey, the reinforcements will be able to... Push the mutas back, and now Cure. Well, his 1 1 is done in 5 seconds. 1 1, not even. Do we even have Evo Chambers for DRG? We don't. Feels like DRG is just really flustered in this game. As he's sitting here, only, only 62 workers. Fourth base only just now getting started. So DRG is really hampered from an economic, economic perspective. And now the mutas will fly in and not get the missile turret. And uh, losing two of their number. Oh, actually, we'll get the missile turret in the end. But uh, losing a couple, losing mutas for it, losing one muta for it, not exactly the best trade. It's run by tries and fails to get on in. DRG just doing whatever he can to pin his opponent back. But just now we realize, oh wait, I tried to build banelings. I why can't I build banelings? Oh, I don't have a banelings. That. that is rather unfortunate for the man from Busan. It means that his push is it's it's gonna be. He's not gonna have uh, speed banes until like 12 minutes into this game. So maybe he was trying to go for that. Uh, there's about a, there's a 60 worker, ling, uh, mutiling bane all in, that players like a laser like to do. Uh, maybe not on this map. I don't think I've seen it on this map, but makes sense with how wide, with how open things are, where you just you don't get one one. You just pump out mutiling bane and you try to you, you hit the Terran with the surprising timing. But you need banelings. You need speed banelings to be able to do that, and that is something that DRG is lacking in the extreme. And actually, Curious so far had never. He's gonna have two two, and DRG is gonna be at zero zero. There is gonna be about a twenty second timing window where DRG is going to be four upgrades ahead of his Zerg opponent, and that is just. I'm not even sure you. I'm okay. You need a split, but I'm not even sure you need a split at that point against the Bailings, especially with the lack of Bailing speed coming in. Now the meters will fly around. Ten workers have gone down, and uh, they will lose. What is that? Lose a couple more mutas, but again, that's a decent run. My 10 workers went down. Um, it doesn't make up for the fact that uh, his upgrade advantage is going to be insane. It doesn't make up for the fact that, uh, that Banely... 2-2 two is going to be done before Banely speed is done. So DRG, his one play in this game is he has to desperately hope that he can keep his opponent back. Keep his opponent. Oh, no, these Widowmine shots are going to go up. No, oh, no, the Widowmines are... Oh, no, the Widowmines... How many did we lose there? Something like eight mutas died in the... Not in the blink of an eye, but died pretty dang fast. Now, luckily, of course, mutas, they regen pretty quickly. But, man, think about how, how bad one Thor volley would have been there. But how low... Every, every muta was just on about five hit points. And that is not a good situation to be in. Now, 2-2 two, two is done. 1-1 one, one is not done. Speed is done in ten seconds. I would have liked to see Cure try to hit that timing, but... Eh, more likely than not, he was not aware of it, so no big deal. It looks like Cure, he's just going to take his fourth base. He's going to max out, and that is when we're going to see the aggressive Cure. When he's going to say, you know what? I maxed out. I got my tech that I want. I got my fourth base. Is it okay? Now, we have a my drop coming on in here. 11 workers going down as we see it come up. Drop going off once again. Are we going to see anything more go down here? No pull. And actually, yeah, the Zerglings will be able to take care of that. And the meat is flying in. And, okay, not really able to get a whole lot. So Cure does damage. DRG does not. As now this one what of mine is going to come off. He's going to come off in a second. It looks like it's hidden behind the extractor just enough. 
And the question is, what does it target? Oh, okay. Three more workers. Not the end of the day. All right, so now Hive on the way, plus two Carapace, but not plus two attack, as DRG is just really suffering from an economic perspective. I mean, now he's up to 86 workers, but it took him until like 11 minutes in this game to really get to where, get to where he wanted to be from an economic perspective. And now with both the Mental Turrets here and the Widow Mines as well, yeah, he's starting to get some economic damage, but he is losing mutas in the exchange. And so many Widow Mines, so many Missile Turrets here. It's so hard. It's just hard. For, uh, for DRG to get the damage he wants. Meanwhile, of course, Kira says, hey, look, if your mutas aren't here, I'm not really sure you can fight. So, well, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill your fifth. And Thor's actually do a surprising amount of damage to buildings. So, yeah, that's just gonna go down just like that. But now we have a big counterattack coming in. But it is only Ling Bane or uh, Ling Muto. So it's not really gonna fight all that well, especially with the upgrade lead that Cure has here. So a bunch of Mutas have died. A bunch of Zerglings have died. And now Cure going on with the pushes. He's up 20 army supply. 20 supply on DRG, but he's up 40 army supply. Now, this 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 is going to be a last-ditch effort. The Bailings have to wipe this army from the face of the map. If they don't, well, that doesn't even matter because the push is on the front doorstep, and it does not look like the Bailings have enough, and GG Cure! He's going to take it. He's going to move on to the third round of the Ultima League number 214.